All right, guys, I'm heading up to one of our club repeater sites, and uh, it's caused it's something's wrong. Um, we would we lost uh, remote control of the repeater. It was it was transmitting, but it wasn't there wasn't any audio. Uh, it's uh, our C4FM Wires X repeater, and it um, it wasn't something was something's wrong. So we couldn't get it even to come out of transmit. Uh, this started on today's Tuesday, just before Thanksgiving. Sorry about that light. And uh, we couldn't, uh, this started on Sunday, but we can't access the repeater uh, physically until uh, today on Tuesday uh, because the repeater is located at, at a 911 dispatch site and we can't uh, access it without their permission during hours when they're there and yesterday they had other uh, things being serviced and we couldn't access it. Uh, the chief there did uh, kindly, uh, he did go in and uh, turn our repeater off for us at our request. Uh, we were worried we we're gonna be uh, burning up our final, you know, our PA section or something because it was on, it was uh, stuck in transmit. Uh, so thankfully he turned that off. So now I'm gonna go out to the side. I have permission to be there in a couple minutes. I can't take you inside because there are rules against that with uh, photography uh, in the building, but I can at least show you uh, a quick picture of the outside. And uh, then we'll we'll get this repeater home and get it uh, diagnosed, figure out what in the world's going on with this thing. So our repeater antenna is on that uh, farther away tower right there. And that's the site, but that's as much as I can show you. Uh, we're in that building below the tower there. Okay, this is our repeater our Yezu System Fusion DR2X repeater system. So uh, it's back at my house now, and we I've been trying to troubleshoot what uh, what the issue is, and so far everything's functioning perfectly fine, um, which is a problem when trying to figure out you know a, a, an error if it's an intermittent one. So. Uh, talking to some other some other repeater uh, operators, some other uh, uh, club trustees in other areas like Kansas City, Missouri area. Uh, a few of them are running, several of them are, are running uh, this DR2X, and some of them have had this same issue with uh, wanting to lock up on transmit. And when they upgraded their firmware, updated their firmware in the repeater, they didn't have that issue again. So we're going to give that a try and see if we can't get... Uh, uh, get an improvement so I'm going to show you how um, how to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to check our firmware version first and right now up at the very top there you can see the uh, RX 1.51 and let me show you what uh, what the latest uh, firmware update is latest firmware update from yezu.com is uh, 158. So we're a little bit down from the newest uh, version. Okay, so to find this uh, firmware and the instructions on how to do the update, you're going to go to yazu.com and at the top, which I'm not at, sorry. Hold on a second here. The top of the main page of the website, you can go to products. When you go to products, you're going to go to I believe it's digital there you go yeah I was already on there um, you're gonna find their uh, re the repeater right there so you're gonna find the product first and then you're gonna go to the uh, yes I'm already there there we go uh, it's gonna give a description summaries all the stuff features but then also that's the tab you're on now. And then this next tab is files. You're gonna to go to that. And it's got all the files. It has all the operating uh, manuals and uh, also the firmware updates. So you've got the updates, uh, the firmware uh, software there. And then you've also have the instructions on, on how to do the update. And there's update information that tells you, I believe that just tells you what uh, what they've done in this latest update. So when you click on those, you'll want to download them. 
and then we're going I'm going to jump right over to the instructions here the instructions start off uh, telling you, you know, this is just for the DR2X don't try this on the DR1X and also guys you're doing this at your own risk a little disclaimer there just uh, use caution read the instructions thoroughly you really don't want to brick this um, repeater and have to send it back to Yezu or even worse have to buy another one so okay scrolling down you're gonna check the firmware version which we just did and our latest one is uh, quite outdated and see like I showed you there shows you what uh, the options are all right here shows you what the uh, firmware version is and your PC and what you're gonna need is obviously a PC you're gonna need to have access to your repeater and then you're also going to need uh, the cable that came with hopefully came with your repeater if you bought it new it should have uh, if you didn't buy it new this is the cable get it to focus there it's the SCU 20 uh, you can buy this aftermarket but I don't think it's very cheap uh, we still have ours so there you go the, here's the instruction it tells you what you need to have PC wise I'm just using my laptop should be fine Let's go down here. Okay, let me pause for a second and I'll come back and show you where we're at. Okay, so it's first, what you wanna do is you need to download the driver um, for the, um, the S, it's called the SCU20 driver, which is going to be the driver for the connection cable that you're going to use to install this firmware software. Okay, so that is also found uh, in the firmware that you've hopefully downloaded from the Yeezy website. As part of the firmware, right, when you download that, it also has the driver. It includes the driver and um, I'm not gonna go into how to do that part. It's really just opening that, that file that you've downloaded and then um, clicking on the driver and it'll install it. It should install it for you. And uh, once that's installed, then what you're going to do, per the instructions here, right here using the programmer, I'm gonna move this camera around a little bit. You wanna make sure the unit is off. It is off, power switch is off, and I disconnected the cable. Like it says, that may not be necessary. Now there are two front plugs, there, sorry, there are two plugs on the top of the repeater. See, one there. Another one there. You're gonna remove the front most plug. And if you look inside there, there's a little switch. You see that little switch in there? Right now, normally for normal operation, it's turned, it's uh, pushed to the front most position. You're going to reach in with everything off and unplugged and you're gonna push that little, I think DIN switch is what, you, what it would be called, into the rear most position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll come back. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it is now in the rearmost position. So now the instructions say to go ahead and plug in the, the power cable back in and turn on the repeater. And it, what it should do is it should flash the front screen briefly and then the screen should stay blank. And what you're in now is the uh, uh, boot command, the boot control. So it's not going to uh, run the, the uh, typical you know, repeater uh, firmware software it's going to um, be in boot mode so we'll come back I'll show you okay cables plugged back in and um, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on instructions even say that the fan should kick on as you can see the the screen flash briefly and now it stays off and the instructions actually say that that's what should happen Okay, per the instructions that are there in the background, uh, it says with the repeater on, but in the uh, the boot uh, the boot load position on the switch. Hopefully, you can still hear me. The fans just kicked on in the repeater. But per the instructions, we're gonna go to. Oh, I messed that up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we're gonna go to. Uh, the firmware folder from what we've downloaded we're gonna go to the main folder and we're looking for the application this should be the install application for the firmware updater we're gonna run this 
Yes. Now it's going to ask you what COM port the uh, SCU20 is plugged into. And if you don't know, on uh, I think with Windows 10 or maybe probably in 11, you can go into your um, settings or you can hold down the Windows button and the X key. And what you're going to get up here is all these different options. And go to Device Manager. And then you're gonna go down to ports, and it will tell you what ports are currently open, what COM ports are open. And our uh, prolific USB to serial COM port, which is the SCU20, is COM port 8, right there. So, close that out. And now we're gonna tell. We're gonna tell the software that we're using COM port 8. update. Alright, uh, reminder, before updating make sure the following preparations uh, procedure below, turn off the power switch, switch the program switch to the boot side, connect the PC cable, and turn on the power switch. Alright, we've done that. Let's see here, it's updating. Come back when it's almost done. Uh, it's still updating. As you can see, there still isn't anything showing on the screen. And that's normal. All right, the firmware just finished update. So it's complete. And let's see, turn off power switch, disconnect the cable, uh, the data cable, and switch the program switch to the off side. So just basically undo what we already did, what we just did. So I'm going to do that. Okay, that DIN switch is slid back to the forward position. And we're going to go ahead and plug this uh, back in and turn it on. I'll show you um, what the uh, front um, control screen says. Okay, the SCU20 data cable is disconnected and the DIN switch is slid to the forward position. So let's see if this update took. There's a normal boot screen. Sorry about my finger there. Alright. That's the normal screen. Let's go to setup. And at the top left it says setup RX 1.58. So that was a successful RX firmware update. So let's go ahead and move on to the DSP update. Okay, for the DSP firmware update, the instructions state to connect the SCU20 cable, data cable, which I have. Um, power cable is connected to the repeater, and then it says to hold a finger on the LCD display while turning the power on. DSP update, it says. And it should say push setup. And setup is this button up here. Is waiting now it says DSP uh, arrows and then come so that's what the instructions say that it should be doing right now so let me go back up to the computer and I will show you what is next okay included in that package of software that we downloaded uh, for uh, firmware from uh, Yezu we already went through this uh, RX main to get to our initial uh, RX firmware update. And now we're gonna go to the DSP folder. And we're looking for PC, PC tool E. And we're going to run that. That's gonna ask what COM port. And uh, we should still be at eight. I'm gonna click okay. Before updating, make sure the following procedure is uh, done. Let's see, turn the receiver on and see if we're open DSP. Uh, right mode. We've done all that. Update. Please check the version number. We've done that. Alright, beginning the update. Let me show you if this uh, screen says anything. 
screen is still showing. Okay. All right, the update just finished. Uh, before that, it was still saying um, DSP to com. So uh, after that, it says update end. And up on the screen here, same as before, it says firmware update is completed. Okay, now according to the instructions, the next step is disconnect the SCU20 data cable and um, power the repeater back up and check what uh, DSP firmware version it now shows. It showed 6. Point, I'm sorry, excuse me, it showed uh, 5.02, I believe, before. And now it's at DSP 5.03. So that was successful. And we are in good shape. That completes firmware update on the uh, Yezu uh, System Fusion DR2X repeater. Thanks for watching.